Hey Grand Travelers! The Strong National Museum of Play is located right here in Rochester, New York. Now you may be wondering, Melinda, why are you highlighting a play museum? This is a channel for Grand Travelers. And I don't blame you one bit. But the Play Museum, as my family calls it, is a great destination for Grand Travelers. It is a place to come and relive some childhood memories, as well as a place to bring your grandchildren. So come on, let's go play at the Strong National Museum of Play. According to their website, which I will leave linked below in the description box, the Strong National Museum of Play is a highly interactive, collections-based museum devoted to the history and exploration of play. The museum has several permanent exhibits that include Can You Tell Me How to Get to Sesame Street? and Imagination Destination. They generally have a calendar full of exciting events to participate in. For example, on March 30th, I checked out their website and they had a sensory friendly Sunday coming up on April 10th, which is an event designed for children with special sensory, developmental, or physical needs. The Strong also has the world's most comprehensive collection of toys, dolls, board games, video games, books, documents, and more, all relative to play. For an extra fee, there is a butterfly garden to enjoy too. The museum is open Saturday through Thursday, 10 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. On Fridays, they stay open an extra three hours until 8 o'clock p.m. General admission is $19 for everyone two and older. Under two years old are free. The Strong has a multitude of things for seniors ages 55 and up. Every Monday is Museum Mondays for seniors. If you qualify, you can purchase a ticket for $13 and that ticket is good for the museum and the butterfly garden. They also offer behind the scenes experiences and unforgettable educational experiences for seniors. Most areas of the Strong are wheelchair and walker accessible. A limited number of wheelchairs are available on a first come, first serve basis. On the day we visited the museum, we were celebrating our youngest daughter's 19th birthday. She requested to come here. It's one of her most favorite places to visit in Rochester. My parents were in town for our oldest daughter's wedding. They had heard us talk about the Play Museum a lot, but had never visited on any of their previous visits. My daddy, who had bad knees at the time, thought about just sitting in the car while we went into the museum. At the last minute, he decided he would see if they had a wheelchair. By the end of the visit, he was declaring the museum a very cool place to visit and was thoroughly glad he got a wheelchair. My mama absolutely enjoyed herself too. 2019 was the last year that we visited the museum. As such, we were surprised at the changes we saw when we visited this past autumn. There is now a new parking garage and entrance to access the museum. Admissions and the gift shop have moved from their original location to an area near the stairs and elevator that lead to the second floor. So as you leave the admissions area, you enter this large atrium. We headed left to one of Robert's favorite areas, the American Comic Book Heroes exhibit. Superman, Spider-Man, Batman, and more comic book heroes greet you as you walk through the golden age of comic books. Listen to original 1940s radio transcripts, view television broadcasts, 
and play video games all based on these figures. You can even create your own superhero. Our next stop was in Pinball Playfields. Here, you can play your way through more than 80 years of pinball history. You'll see countertop games of the 1930s, including Wiffle, World's Fair Jigsaw, and Humpty Dumpty, as well as the popular electronic pinball machines of today. You can even see firsthand the world's largest commercial pinball machine named Hercules. Playable machines require purchased tokens. The monies collected helps maintain the original artifacts. We then followed the Yellow Brick Road into Reading Adventureland. This is a fantastic area for littles that is highly interactive. There is an upside down nonsense house, Adventure Island, Fairy Tale Forest, Wizard's Workshop, and one of my favorite areas, Mystery Mansion. Each area is created to represent a life size pop up book. If you exit Reading Adventureland nearest the main staircase by admissions, be sure to check out the artwork that comes to life as you head toward Women in Games. We finally made it to our daughter's favorite area in the Play Museum, Wegman's Super Kids Market. She has loved this area since she was a little girl. And interestingly enough, she now works for Wegmans in their bakery department. She has learned so much and makes from scratch the most beautiful cakes I've ever seen. At the Super Kids Market, you will find everything that a grown up Wegmans has. There are prepared meals, a sushi bar, and a coffee bar. There's a nature's marketplace for those organic and gluten free products. Child-sized shopping carts and working checkout counters are a hit with kids of all ages. Don an apron and help customers in the deli, meat, seafood, and bakery departments. This highly interactive child-sized supermarket just may inspire your little one to work in a big Wegmans one day. Another fun stop for us that we always make is at Can You Tell Me How to Get to Sesame Street? The first of the two main things we do in this area is watch Bethany put her name on the Scene Today on Sesame Street sign. Now in this area, you can travel through five decades of Sesame Street. The next thing we do that is a must when visiting Sesame Street is to get a photo on the famous stoop of 123 Sesame Street. There are a lot of interactive components in this area for all to enjoy. You can say hello to Big Bird and you can climb into Big Bird's nest for a rest if needed. When we left the Sesame Street area, we stopped for a brief moment to check out Peanuts and Play Display, which is located near the Field of Play exhibit. This display contains a six-foot-tall Snoopy with his best friend Woodstock. You can view toys that were popular during the baby boom era. You can also explore the impact that Peanuts had on all aspects of culture. The final exhibit on the first floor that we enjoy visiting is called Field of Play. In this exhibit, you will find interactive and creative play activities and hundreds of fascinating artifacts that highlight the six major elements of play. Anticipation, surprise, pleasure, understanding, strength, and poise. 
Here you can drive a drag racer, use pulleys to power a gigantic overhead ball machine, walk through a giant kaleidoscope, and lose all sense of proportion in the exaggerated perspective room. Since our video is now over 10 minutes, I'm going to stop here and make a part two. It will contain the upstairs portion of the museum. Here you will find the Toy Halls of Fame, Game Time, E-Game Revolution, and more. I hope that you appreciated the information in part one. If you did, would you please give it a thumbs up? It would really help our channel out. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to watch this video. See you soon with part two.